All right, here with Trinity Episcopal head basketball coach Rick Hammond after his team 73-60 win over W.T. Woods in the 10th annual VirginiaPreps.com basketball classic to move to, is it 13-2? That's yeah. right. Coach, uh, after this game, what are you? Are you exhausted, tired, <laughs> I, am, I am tired. <laughs> I mean, some of that is chasing my three kids around all day. You know, when okay. you play the nightcap, it, it, it's a lot of time to kill. It's, a, it's obviously an honor, and thank you for inviting us and, 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 you know, matching us up with a – a really tough opponent that that gave us their best shot for sure, um, but we had a, a you know an emotional um, league rival last night at our, at our place, um, and you know we're not right now as deep as we want to be, and so I do, we looked a little fatigued for three quarters there, but I think we dug deep and obviously played a, a great fourth quarter. Sure. Um, but y yes, I am tired. <laughs> 27-13 now scoring W.T. Woods in the reigning 6A public school state champs in the fourth quarter. You guys, of course, defending private school state champs, VISA Division One. You know, it's interesting, is this that league rival you played last night, do you see some similarities with Woodson, too? They, they were big inside, mm -hmm. and it was probably a good test for Mondo, Armando Bacot getting co-MVP with Jason Wade, 27 points apiece, six rebounds apiece. Uh, first ever co-MVPs, and it's probably <laughs> fitting with those two guys, right? Yeah, I mean, those two guys are, are incredible, and you know, we've got some other really great players with, with Henry Coleman and Tank Boyd does so much to, to make us, to, to pull it all together, and you know, we're continuing to work on developing that, that depth beyond those guys as well, but mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you're talking about two of the best players in the state. Um, they're, I mean, Mondo inside and Jason, you know, outside, and with, both of them are great defensively, which is really important to us as a program. Um, I think Mondo's defense is really underrated. I mean, his basket protection is incredible, but he also can step outside and keep guys in front of him and uh, moves really well f for his size and even can be at the head of our press and, you know, pick up guys full court. And I think those things are going to serve him really well at the next level. But co-MVPs, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Jason had definitely a better first half, but then Mondo came to life in the second half. I think he had 20 points in the second half. And in the fourth quarter, he really got going. And sometimes – even for someone as great as him, who obviously has a lot of confidence as he should, you still need to see the ball go through the basket a few times, yeah. and that um, can make you feel, if you're as good as Mondo is, unstoppable. But yeah, I mean, I do think Woodson's size bothered him a little bit. Some shots near the basket that he makes almost all the time. He missed a few uh, close ones, but I don't want to say they were easy ones because yeah. when you got a couple six, seven, six, eight guys in the vicinity. Um, I assume. <laughs> but you don't see those type of guys all the time, though. No, you definitely don't, for sure. I mean, we played a team earlier this week, a very good team, but a team this week that didn't have anybody over 6'3". You know, so when, when and, and although we have a very big team, it's still sometimes hard to simulate in practice that kind of size at game speed. Uh, we try to, but, um, yeah, I mean, not a lot of high school teams have – the size that Woodson does, or, or that we do. So, right. um, in that regard, you know, it probably looked like a college game, at least size-wise. Um, but yeah, Mondo didn't make as many shots early as he usually does. But still, you look at the stats at the end, and he has you know 27 points and 20 in the second half, and um, he's an incredible player, and we're very grateful that he's with us. Well, and it is a two-three zone that was really effective in the first half. But I thought, in, in the the key in that. Was, was Jason Wade. So it's so unselfish. He gets 27 points, but six assists. You've talked about him being maybe the best perimeter defending guard in the state, and he has yeah. four steals. And just, I thought he was patient. Y'all didn't get in a funk, even though there was they were giving us some problems with what they did. Exactly. He made some great passes. You said six assists. I mean, if we hadn't missed a few uh, close ten. shots, he could have had, he could have probably had 10. And defensively, he did a great job. I mean, not just the four steals, but also he gets some deflections. He, you know, the player that he spent most of the game guarding. He's a great player, a Division One player that I think Number he held. Four, right? Yeah, going to JMU. Yeah, going to JMU. I think he held him to single digits um, last night. He, you know, guarded the guy who averages 25 a game and held him to single digits. Essentially, end up with 11. But the, the last few point of those points were after Jason had gone out late in the game. So his defense is, is incredible. We're gonna really sorely miss that uh, next year. But thankfully, we got a couple more months. Um, and then, yeah, offensively, he. Just he made the right passes. Mm -hmm. He always makes, almost always makes the right basketball decision. He he made one poor decision in the second quarter that we talked about uh, on a fast break. But overall, I thought Jason continued to play how he always plays, and that's the thing when you don't see him every night. I'm sure for folks who who are, came out to this event today, maybe seen him rarely or not much at all, or maybe even never. They're like, wow, you know. But he played tonight how he always plays. Final one. Thank you for your time. You guys obviously have a great chance to be right where you want to be come March. Uh, you told me earlier in the season defense. It looks like you got a little bit better of that. Is, have. is now the concern free throws? You did go 14 yeah, to 31. That's of concern. Okay. And we've 
been okay with our free throw shooting this year. I mean, not, of course, their free throws. People are going to hack you guys later. Yeah, they, they are. And I, I mean, as a coach who, look, man, there's many, many, many things I cannot and never could do on a basketball court that our guys could. But, like, I, I was a good free throw shooter, so as a, right. as a coach, 14 for 31 is unacceptable. And yeah. I mean, we work on it in practice. Some of that I do think is just our focus in the first half or even the first three quarters wasn't great tonight. Woodson deserves a lot of credit for that, but free throws are focus. And so I do think, you know, I told you, I, yeah, I'm kind of exhausted. You could see it on the guys as well. Um, that And that manifests itself in, in the poor free throw shooting. But our, our defense has made big strides um, really ever since the Miller game um, at the beginning of the month. That's now four four or five games in a row where I feel like our defense has been really strong. Five, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't say it was really strong tonight, but it's certainly better than it was in, in November and December. Um, and in the fourth quarter, our pressure was really good. And yeah. we, when we went from behind one to pretty quickly up six or eight, it was mostly off of uh, getting some great double teams, some great traps, some steals, speeding them up. And so our defense ultimately is what won us the game. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Matt. Always